In October of 2020, 17-year-old Joaquin Oliver appeared in a commercial for Change the Ref, a nonprofit advocating for increased gun control. In it, he gives an impassioned speech, urging people to get out and vote. He declares, vote for politicians who care more about people's lives than the gun lobby's money. Ad Age of October 2nd, 2020 covered the political advertisement's release. But Joaquin is not around to hear the reception to his commercial, because he died. Back on February 14th, 2018, in the infamous Parkland Massacre. Using deepfake technology to produce unfinished votes, Joaquin is brought back for a final message. Take a look. Go to unfinishedvotes.com, register, then go vote. Vote for politicians who care more about people's lives than the gun lobby's money. Vote for people not getting shot, bro. I mean, vote for me. While some critics have lauded this as diligent activism, others have rebuked it, because Joaquin is no longer around to lend a voice for this cause. Time of December 30th, 2020 reports that gun violence has killed more than 19,000 people in 2020 alone, the highest rate in 20 years. Considering that gun violence is not only the cause of death for Joaquin, but also the alleged reason he's come back to life, we must ask. How does unfinished votes use the dead as a communicative tool to amplify its message? To answer, we'll turn to Don Roth and Stephen Muzzati's 2018 article, Mortuous Politics, Politicization of the Dead, Capitalism and Inequality, published in the Contemporary Justice Review. This model is ideal because the authors discuss the links between politics and death discourse that reinforce power structures in life and death. Unfinished Votes is using Joaquin's deceased state to elevate the platform of the living creators, making this model ideal for our analysis. So let's explore the model, apply it to Unfinished Votes, before drawing implications about a video that Patricia and Manuel, Joaquin's parents say, brings back someone that no one can ignore. The Oliver's worked with Light Farm Studio to reanimate their deceased son in order to create a political platform. Roth and Muzzati discuss the links between politics and death discourse that intertwine through publicizing grief, pre-existing modes, and spectacle. First, publicizing grief. Roth and Muzzati explain that in the past century, death has transitioned from the private to the public sphere. In essence, people have shifted from mourning at home to performing their grief publicly, contemporarily. Grief is expressed online through social media and other platforms. The authors use the example of Prince's death, which sparked marathon media coverage, as well as a social media outpour in which people express their grief. Second, pre-existing modes. The value that we place on the dead is rooted in relationships, who we are to whom or what that existed during life. In other words, the way we understand a dead person is based on their pre-existing states. Father, husband, firefighter, and so on. The authors point to a report by the Post Crescent of August 11, 2016 about Tommy Jiang, a homeless man who was found dead due to the assumption of drugs and alcohol in his system. Jiang's modes as homeless and possibly alcoholic structure the way we understand his death, and cyclically, his life. Third. Spectacle. Roth and Muzzati argue that spectacle, elaborate communicative performances, allow death to be memorialized and participatory. Corpses of celebrities, athletes, and entertainers are thrust into the forefront of news stories and images that are published and broadcasted by every news outlet. The authors point to suicides and drug overdoses as feeding celebrity culture's narcissism, using gruesome details to invite the audience to participate in finding meaning in death. Now we've broken down Roth and Muzzati's model, we can use it to understand how messages are viewed posthumously by applying our findings to unfinished votes. First, the publicizing of grief. Joaquin's parents, Patricia and Manuel, told the previously mentioned ad age, all of this is very painful for us, but none of this is even close to the actual pain we felt. On February 14th, 2018, by mobilizing the video, his parents are making their grief public. Moreover, 
by asking for donations to unfinished votes. That grief is further publicized by motivating political activism. Joaquin's parents could have chosen to grieve privately. This campaign signals the opposite. Second, pre-existing modes. Roth and Muzadi explain that relationships in life shape how we understand the dead. Joaquin was a son, a student, and as ABC News of February 14, 2020 explains, he enjoyed hip hop and was a huge Miami Heat fan. His parents used these modes to appeal to audiences and make their message that much more powerful. In order for the commercial to be effective, Joaquin needs to be humanized. They do this by sharing the past details of him and, within the video, recreating the pre-death Joaquin, making sure to keep his sense of style, cadence of speech, and youthful personality. All modes of a Joaquin that no longer exists. Third, spectacle. The authors explain that spectacle memorializes death and invites public participation. AP News of October 2nd, 2020 points out, the 17-year-old's mannerisms and vernacular are shockingly lifelike. See for yourself. Yo, it's me. It's what? I've been gone for two years and nothing's changed, bro. People are still getting killed by guns. What is that? Everyone knows it, but they don't do anything. I'm tired of waiting for someone to fix it. This is more than just a targeted ad. It's a revival. Crucially, Joaquin asks us to vote against the powers that led to his death, inviting us to participate in death with him. It is this spectacle of resurrecting an innocent boy that asks us to be more shocked by his unnecessary death than his digital reincarnation. Returning to our research question, how does unfinished votes use the dead as a communicative tool to amplify its message? Unfinished Votes uses a computer-generated Joaquin to stun its audience with its realistic portrayal in order to spur collective action. They borrow the ethos of an innocent 17-year-old son and student in order to invite public grief, and then funnel that grief toward constructive action. Gun reform. From this, two implications emerge. First, politicizing pre-existing modes. In the video campaign, we see the digital Joaquin, recreated from how he existed when he lived. As we've established, these modes, or Joaquin's humanity, are fundamental to the campaign's efficacy. Yet we are left to wonder how these modes might be counter-politicized. We've seen this rhetorical tactic before. After the death of Michael Brown, the Washington Post of October 23, 2014 eviscerated apologists for his murder that alleged that Brown's marijuana use and allegation of a prior criminal record were regular defenses for Officer Darren Wilson. They used Brown's pre-existing modes to make sense of and rationalize his death. If pushed, the NRA and other gun rights advocates may choose to do the same with Joaquin. Using Joaquin is meant to humanize the issue of gun control, but it may inadvertently make him a target. Again, Second, in the video, Joaquin implores us to funnel our grief toward collective action in order to prevent more unnecessary deaths like his. Slate of November 2nd, 2020 wonders what the use of deepfake technology in this way means for our grieving process. Put another way, Roth and Muzadi discuss how grief is moved from the private sphere to the public sphere. Unfinished votes moves grief to the digital sphere. The aforementioned Slate hypothesizes what it might mean for Joaquin to be perfectly recreated, using the sum of his texts, emails, social media, and even purchases on Amazon to create a personality algorithm for the 17-year-old boy. At that point, would grief even be necessary? It is the imperfection in the video rendering that reminds us that he is in fact dead, and we should mourn. But as the years go on, this technology will only get better. Trading in death? for digital reincarnation. In an interview with Good Morning Britain on October 15, 2020, Manuel Oliver said, gun violence is not just a Parkland or a school thing. It goes beyond that, and even beyond Joaquin himself. 
which is why we examined Roth and Muzadi's model, applied it to unfinished votes, before drawing implications. The future of deepfake technology is still in question. But who our voice belongs to in death shouldn't be.